Selenium is a natural element that occurs in soils throughout the Intermountain West. The occurrence of this element is relatively high in lands found in and around the Caribou Targhee National Forest. Selenium is one of the elements that lies next to arsenic on the periodic table. Selenium is not as poisonous as its atomic neighbor, but it can be very toxic. Selenium in trace amounts is required for human and animal health. You can find selenium supplements on the shelf of your local pharmacy. But when ingested in higher concentrations, it can cause many health problems and eventually death. The required amounts for healthy functioning are very, very small. This is why it does not take much contamination to produce a very dangerous problem to animals and humans. For people, short-term exposure to selenium levels in water any higher than 10 parts per billion can cause hair and fingernail changes, damage to the nervous system, fatigue, and irritability. Long-term elevated exposure can cause hair and fingernail loss, kidney and liver damage, and problems with the nervous and circulatory systems. In very high concentrations, there is also a risk of death. For animals, selenium contamination poses a very serious threat. In livestock, selenium contamination results in deformed hooves, lack of vitality, rough coats, lameness, and other internal problems. When livestock eat plants and water with very high selenium concentrations, severe symptoms result. Usually, death occurs within a few hours. Cattle and sheep are most often affected, but horses, goats, swine, and other livestock can also be harmed. Selenium also affects wildlife such as deer, elk, moose, wild birds, fish, and many other species. As insects, fish, and wild animals feed upon each other in the natural cycle, toxic selenium concentrations in their tissues can be cycled into the food chain for decades. Wild fish and game with high selenium concentrations can also spread the toxic selenium to hunters and anglers. Selenium, locked away in underground rock formations, is released when those formations are disturbed. In eastern Idaho, phosphate mining has been digging up mountainsides for half a century. The mines dig up millions of tons of earth and rocks to get to the phosphate reserves. This earth is also rich in selenium. The phosphate is sent off to processing plants and the waste is piled at the mines. As rain and snow start to erode this waste, the selenium is carried off in high levels into the streams and underground water flows. As demand for phosphate has increased over the past few decades, so has mining in this region. This industry has left behind as many as 28 mining sites that each causes varying amounts of selenium seepage. Fifteen of the mine sites are so contaminated with selenium and other materials they have earned a Superfund designation from the Environmental Protection Agency. Such Superfund sites pose a very serious risk. As these mines seep selenium concentrations into nearby streams and underground water, the problem builds up gradually over time. Once oxidized into a toxic state, selenium contamination accumulates in soils and living tissues and remains for a very long time. If the source of contamination is not eliminated, over time the slow buildup of higher and higher concentrations can finally lead to widespread toxic effects. In the early 80s, scientists were shocked by a sudden die-off of tens of thousands of migrating birds and native fish at the Kesterson Wildlife Refuge in Central California. The cause was found to be the slow buildup of selenium concentrations from irrigation drainage through selenium-rich soils. The buildup had happened slowly for many decades until it finally caused a widespread catastrophic event. So far, billions of dollars have been spent trying to clean up the refuge. This event, and others like it, have helped to educate us on the severe risks with selenium contamination. Selenium concentrations in the soil of nearby phosphate mining areas are 15 times higher than the land surrounding Kesterson. Many streams in this area already exceed water quality standards. As time passes, new streams are also becoming contaminated from underground water flows. South Sage Creek was thought to be isolated from any contamination by many industry experts. However, after many years, testing has shown that selenium seepage has finally reached this stream as well. 
In the past year alone, it has gone from having clean water to surpassing water quality standards for selenium levels. These high selenium concentrations are already having visible effects in this area. Native fish have been virtually eliminated from East Mill Creek. Looking at fish samples from the region, Dr. Rob Van Kirk of Idaho State University has produced a model that shows the potential long-term population effects for native cutthroat trout. His research shows that based upon the concentrations being found in area fish, up to 90% of the trout population could disappear in some streams in coming years. As the buildup of selenium contamination continues from exposed mine sites, the effects will eventually reach further and further downstream. This means that the Salt and Blackfoot rivers are in harm's way, as well as the Palisades and Blackfoot reservoirs. Selenium is a real threat to water, lands, and animals in this region. Dr. A. Dennis Limley, a research biologist for the U.S. Forest Service, has warned, this ecosystem is a tinderbox, and allowing additional selenium discharges will likely start a cascade of irreversible events culminating in severe toxic impacts for many years to come.